Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching you how to make a modern hoodie vest. For this vest, we're working with a wider ribbing, a comfy mock neck, and a textured hood courtesy of my friend Ali Alpine making this an instant classic. Speaking of, if you're looking to master the classics or make something new, you are in the right place. We've got hundreds of modern crochet designs with plenty more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 340 grams of yarn, and that's 600 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your hoodie preference, pullover or zip up. For me, I am an oversized hoodie type of gal. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and I explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we are first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook, and we're all going to get started with our front panel detail. So we're all going to start by making an odd number chain that reaches from the corner of our underarm down to where we want the bottom of this top to be. Now, I already measured mine out. I need a total of 13.5 inches or 38 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 55. So now that we have our chain, our first row is going to be a double crochet row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 3. Now that chain 3 doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain, and from here we're going to yarn over, inserting our hook into that fourth chain from our hook, or into that chain that we blocked off. So bring our hook down and into that chain, we're going to yarn over, pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, there's our double crochet, let's just do one more. Yarn over, into that following chain, pull through, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And continue to put one double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one so that we can increase together. So now that we put one double crochet into every chain, we should have left the last one, and now we're going to be doing an increase of three. So let's three double crochets into that last stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into that last chain with our first, with our second, And with our third double crochet, and all together, that is three double crochets into that last chain. Now our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, but we need to increase into that row as well. So how we're going to do that is start our slip stitch row with a chain two. That first chain is going to count as a stitch. That second chain is going to count as our turning chain, and then flip our work. From here, we're going to be inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop. So skip this first chain, and then inserting your hook into that following stitch, we're going to insert your hook into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, yarn over, and pull through both of those loops on your hook, making sure that we're pulling through gently, otherwise the following row is going to be too tight to work into. Let's do this again. Into that following stitch, insert your hook into that back loop, yarn over, and gently pull through everything. Let's do one more. Into that following stitch's back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. And continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So we've just made our way down to the end of our row two. Now for this middle detail portion, it's gonna be alternating between a back loop double crochet and back loop slip stitch row. So to get started on our back loop double crochet, we're gonna chain three and flip our work. Now our back loop double crochet is going to be done pretty much the same way as our regular double crochets, just within the back loops. 
So start with the yarn over, find that first available stitch from our previous row, insert your hook into that back loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. This is our first back loop double crochet. Let's do another one. Yarn over into that following stitches back loop, insert and pull through, pull through two and pull through two. And continue to put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one to increase together once more. All right, so now that we've made our way all the way down with our back loop double crochets, we should have just one stitch left, and now we're gonna do another increase of three. So starting with the yarn over, insert your hook into that last stitches back loop, and do our first double crochet into that same back loop with our second, and then into that same back loop with our third double crochet in that increase, and that's it. From here, we're gonna do another slip stitch row and then we're going to repeat. So let's just get started on the following row together. That's a back loop slip stitch row. So we're always gonna start that off with a chain two and flip our work. Now that first chain that's closest to our hook is gonna count as our turning chain. And then the second chain from our hook is gonna count as a stitch. So start by inserting your hook into that second stitches back loop with our first slip stitch and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And we're just going to continue to repeat these two rows, making sure that we are stretching it as if we're wearing it because it does have a decent stretch to it. We're gonna place this first row right where the corner of our underarm is and work these two rows until this point that we have reaches about an inch underneath the base of our neck, making sure that we end right after a double crochet row. Now a really quick tip to make sure that we're all getting the sizing right. When I say placing the first row at the front of our body, I would say place this first row about where your bra strap or tank top strap would be in front of your body because we are going to have some alpine details that reaches to mid underarm. So just continue to do this, double checking, making sure that we are stretching it as if we're wearing it. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can do the second half of our front panel. All right, so the increased portion of my front panel is all finished up. Now I have a total of seven rows and my width is just about two inches or five centimeters and that is unstretched. And we did end right after a double crochet row. Now from here, we're just going to continue to repeat our back loop double crochet and our back loop slip stitch row, but now with no increases and no decreases, working across our neck until this can stretch to the other side of the base of our neck. And then right after that, we're going to repeat the same thing that we did on this side, but with decreases instead of increases. So I'm just going to show you guys how we're gonna start off this falling row. So since we're along the top, our falling row should be a back loop slip stitch row. So we're all just gonna chain one, flip our work, and then make our way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And at the end of this row, we are going to chain three, preparing for our double crochet row, flip our work, and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch that we have. Remembering this section isn't going to have any increases or decreases. I'll meet you guys back right after a back loop slip stitch row so we can do the decrease side right after that. So I am back and I have just finished up the middle portion of my front panel and now it's just back loop double crochets and back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. And what we're gonna do from here, since we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row, we're gonna start to do our decrease. So since we're along the bottom, do a chain three, flip our work, and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches so that we can do a decrease. So I've just made my way all the way down with my back loop double crochet row, and we should have one, two, three stitches left. So now let's do our decrease of three. So yarn over, insert your hook into that third to last back loop, pull through into that second to last back loop, pull through, and then into that last back loop, and pull through. Once we have those five loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over and pull through the first four loops to get two loops on our hook, and then we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, and that's our decrease. And now we're gonna decrease into our back loop slip stitch row as well, since we did do an increase on this side. So just chain one and flip your work. Now to do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches, we're gonna start by inserting your hook into the last stitch from our previous rows, back loop, and pull through. Next, we're gonna insert our hook into our following back loop. And then once we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all three, and that's our decrease. And from here, we're just gonna to continue to repeat these two rows. 
So a back loop double crochet row that ends with a decrease of three back loop double crochets. And then a back loop slip stitch row that starts with a decrease of two. And we're just going to continue to do that until we have the same amount of rows as increase rows on this side. And then I will meet you guys back so we can do our alpine stitch detail. So I am back and I have just finished up my decrease portion. And I now have a total of 23 rows and my width is just about six and a half inches or 17 centimeters. And that is still unstretched. And just a really quick tip before we get started on our alpine stitch detail. This panel will slant just a little bit, but that's completely fine. It'll all evened out once when it's seamed. But since we're here, we're going to get started on our alpine stitch section. And that's going to be just a half double crochet row, starting with a decrease of two. So since we're along the top right here, we're going to chain two and flip our work. Now to do our half double crochet decrease, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, also into that following stitch, pull through once we have all four of those loops on the hook, just yarn over, pull through all four, and now we're going to put one half double crochet into every stitch. So starting with the yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into that following stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. That's our first half double. Let's just do one more. Yarn over into that following stitch, pull through, pull through all three. And we're going to continue to do this till we reach the end of the row. So now that we have just finished up our half double crochet row, making our way all the way back down, we're now going to get started with our alpine stitch row. So from here, we're going to chain two and flip our work. And we're going to start with a half double crochet. So let's all yarn over once. Find the last stitch from our previous row and insert with a half double crochet. And for our alpine stitches, it's going to be staggered between a half double crochet and a front post double crochet. So let's do our front post. From here, we're going to yarn over again. We're going to find the second half double crochet that we have from our previous row because this first half double crochet counts as this edge half double crochet. And then insert our hook underneath that half double, bringing our hook through the other side. Yarn over and pull through. Now, once we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to pull up nice and tall to get the same height as the half double crochet. Pull through two and then pull through two. Now, all together, we should have one set, which is just a half double and then a front post double crochet. Let's do this again. We're going to start with our half double, so yarn over. We are going to skip one stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as this stitch. And then into that following stitch, insert with a half double. And then to do our front post double, we're all going to yarn over, find the following stitch from our previous row, because remember this half double crochet counts as this stitch. So insert your hook underneath the body of that falling half double crochet, through the other side, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, and pull through two, and that's it. Let's just do one more a little bit quicker. So yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, into the following stitch with a half double. And then yarning over once, preparing for a front post double, we're going to skip the following half double crochet from our previous half double crochet row, because this half double crochet counts as this stitch. And then underneath the following and through the other side, we're going to do a front post double. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down until we have just two stitches left. The last stitch that we should meet back on is right after we finish a double crochet. All right, so I've made my way all the way down with my first alpine stitch row. And like I said, we should have two stitches left at the very end of the row. Now, technically we do have three available stitches, but like I said in the previous clip, our front post double crochet counts as this stitch. So we're not counting this one. So we just have one and two. And now just into that second to last and into that last stitch, we're gonna do a decrease of two half double crochets. So yarn over. We are still going to skip one stitch from our previous row and into that second to last stitch. Insert your hook, pull through, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through. And then once we have all four of those loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four. And this is how we should have ended our row. Now from here, we're going to do another half double crochet row because our alpine stitch isn't reversible. So we're going to have to start our row on the other side. And we're always going to start our half double crochet row with a decrease. So chain two and flip your work. Now from here, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, insert your hook into that following stitch, pull through, should have four loops on our hook. So yarn over, 
pull through all four and then from here put one half double crochet into every stitch so we've just made our way all the way down with our half double crochet row and now we're going to do our second alpine stitch row so how that's going to work is chain two and flip your work so to get started on this alpine stitch row we're all going to need to take a look at our previous alpine stitch row now our stitches need to be staggered to get the texture that we want so since the first stitch that we did for our previous alpine stitch row was a half double crochet we're going to be working a front post double crochet into there making sure that we're not working into that chain two so yarn over insert your hook underneath that half double crochet and through the other side and then front post double crochet per usual so pull through pull up nice and tall pull through two pull through two and it's still going to be the same stitch sequence so our following stitch is going to be a half double crochet so yarn over skip one stitch from our previous row half double crochet into the following and from here we're going to continue to alternate between a front post double crochet and a half double crochet making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left and the last stitch that we would have worked should be a half double crochet so i've just made my way all the way down with my alpine stitches you should have two stitches left and the last stitch that we should have done should have been a half double crochet and now from here we're going to need to do a decrease which is going to be with our last stitch which is a front post double crochet combined with a half double so starting with the yarn over we're going to find our half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row it should be the last half double crochet but making sure that it's not that decrease that we did so underneath that half double crochet insert your hook pull through once we have those three loops on our hook we're going to pull up nice and tall and pull through two and then from here we're going to yarn over insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row yarn over and pull through once we have those four loops on our hook we're going to yarn over and pull through all four and now our second alpine stitch row is all finished up now from here we're just going to continue to repeat our four previous rows until this can stretch to mid underarm so i'm just going to talk you guys through how to do the following rows now in between every alpine stitch row is going to be a half double crochet row that starts with a decrease of two so chain two flip your work and then put one half double crochet into every stitch now getting started with the following alpine stitch row like i said in the previous clip each of our stitches need to be staggered so since the first stitch that we did for our previous alpine stitch row was a front post double crochet we're going to do a half double crochet into there and then into that following half double crochet we're going to do a front post double crochet into there and repeat those two stitches all the way down until we have two stitches left and the last stitch that should have been worked should be a front post double crochet and then i'll meet you back just to do a decrease once more all right so we've made our way all the way down with our alpine stitch we should have two stitches left the last stitch that we should have done should have been a front post double crochet so now let's do a decrease of two to close off this row so we're all going to yarn over into that second to last stitch insert your hook into there pull through into that following stitch pull through yarn over pull through all four and that's it when doing this section we do want to close this off on an alpine stitch row so i'm actually all finished up but i'm just going to do the following two rows with you guys just to remind you guys how we do a front post double crochet combined with a half double so if you guys need to continue from here chain two flip your work start your half double crochet row with a decrease of two put one half double crochet into every stitch now starting our following alpine stitch row we're going to do a front post double crochet because the one that we just did together started with a half double so do a front post double crochet half double crochet right after that and then continue to alternate between those two stitches making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left all right so i am back i just did a little swatch just so i can do our front post double crochet combined with a half double crochet with you guys so now that we made our way all the way down with our alpine stitch row we should have two stitches left the last stitch that we should have done was a half double crochet and now we're going to yarn over and find the last half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row making sure that it's not that decrease so start by inserting your hook underneath that half double crochet pull through pull up nice and tall pull through two and when we have those two loops on our hook we're going to yarn over insert our hook into that last stitch from our previous row pull through yarn over pull through all four and that's it from there we're just going to continue to repeat these four rows until we get the side panel that we need 
and making sure that we end on an alpine stitch row. Once when we do, go ahead and do a chain up a one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back to do the same thing on the other side. All right, so I am back. My alpine stitch section is all finished up, and I now have a total of 29 rows, or just my alpine stitch section was a total of six rows for me. I did do a chain up a one and cut once when I had the width that I wanted, and now we're gonna do the same thing that we did here on the other side, but we're gonna need to insert our hook into a different place because the alpine stitch isn't reversible. So what we're going to want to do is insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our detail. So that means we're gonna be looking at the back first. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and just like the other side, start with a half double crochet row. So chain two, that does not count as a stitch. Yarn over, find that first available stitch and insert with a half double crochet. So pretty simple. Continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch until we have two left, because remember, we have to decrease. So now that we have just half double crocheted all the way down, we should have left the last two stitches, and now we're going to do a decrease. So starting with the yarn over, we're going to insert our hook into that second to last stitch, pull through, insert your hook into that following stitch, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all four of those loops. Now that's our half double crochet decrease. And now we're gonna chain two, flip our work and get started on our alpine stitch row. So we are gonna be mirroring the alpine stitches that we did on the other side. So this first alpine stitch row that we're doing for the side detail is gonna start with a decrease of two half double crochets. So starting with yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, and then into that following stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, and our alpine stitch is still going to be a front post double crochet and then a half double crochet, so let's do our front post. We're going to yarn over, and we are going to be skipping that half double crochet cluster from our previous row, and then the following half double crochet as well, and then we're going to insert our hook underneath the following half double crochet. So we're going to skip one, skip two, underneath that following half double crochet, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, Pull through two, there's our first front post. Yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, half double crochet into the following. And we're just gonna continue to do our front post and half double crochet, making our way all the way down. And the last two that should be worked should be a half double crochet. Now at the end of the row, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and then put one half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two so that we can decrease and start the following alpine stitch row together. All right, so I've just half double crocheted my way all the way down and should have left the last two stitches, so now let's do a decrease. We're all gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that second to last stitch, pull through into that last stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, chain two, and flip your work. Now getting started on our second alpine stitch row, we're going to need to do a half double crochet combined with a front post double crochet. That's gonna be the decrease. So how that's gonna work is we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that first stitch from our previous row, and pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to find the first half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row, making sure that it's not that decrease. So not this stitch, not the front post, but this next half double and insert our hook underneath, yarn over, and pull through. Once we have those four loops on our hook, we're gonna pull up nice and tall like usual, and then yarn over, pull through all four of those loops. And that is our half double crochet combined with a front post double crochet. And now from here, we're gonna continue on with our pattern per usual. So we are gonna skip one stitch from a previous row, half double crochet into the following, Yarn over, preparing for a front post double crochet. Find the last half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row. Insert our hook underneath there, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, and pull through two. And now we're gonna continue to do our half double crochet and front post double crochet, making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left. And then I'm going to do the last set of this row with you guys. All right, so now that we are at the end of our row, we should have one, two stitches left, remembering that third stitch that we have counts as our last front post double crochet that we just did. 
And now we're going to do the last set, which is going to be a half double crochet, and then a front post double crochet that is combined with a half double crochet to keep this edge nice and blunt. So starting with the yarn over, we are going to skip the last stitch from our previous row, half double crochet into that following stitch or the second to last stitch. And from here, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook underneath the last half double crochet from our previous row, pull through, pull up nice and tall. Once we have those three loops, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first two. And once we have those two loops on our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over, insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, yarn over and pull through. Now, once we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all four, and that's it. From here, just chain two, flip our work, put one half double crochet into every stitch, ending this row on a decrease, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so we have just finished up our fourth row for this alpine stitch detail, and that was a half double crochet row that ended with a decrease of two. Now from here, all we're gonna do is repeat our four previous rows until we have the same amount of rows as the other side. And once we have that, go ahead and do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can get started on the back panel. So the entirety of my front panel is all finished up, and now we're going to do our back panel which is just going to be back loop double crochet and back loop slip stitch rows. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we have for our last row that we have for our front panel. Now, if you guys have my numbers, I have a total of 49 stitches. So I'm going to make a chain of 49 and I actually already have the first half of my back portion all finished up. So I'm just gonna be doing a little sample size with you guys. So now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain three. That doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain and we want the height. And start with the yarn over and insert our hook into that fourth chain from our hook with a double crochet. So insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and continue to put one double crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. All right, so now that we put one double crochet into every chain, we've left the last one. And now we're going to do an increase of two into that last chain. So yarn over, inserting our hook into that last chain with our first double crochet, and then one more into that same last chain, just like that. And from here, we're gonna get started on our following slip stitch row, and our slip stitch row is gonna start with an increase as well. So just like how we did the first half of our underarm, we're going to chain two, that first chain counts as a stitch, that second chain counts as our turning chain, flip our work, and then into that second chain from our hook, insert your hook into that back loop with a slip stitch, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And now that we put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, now we're just going to repeat our back loop double crochet row that ends on an increase of two, followed by a slip stitch row within the back loops that has an increase into it as well. So from here, just as a reminder, chain three, flip your work, and then from here, we're just going to continue to repeat our back loop double crochet row and our back loop slip stitch row with the same increases along the same end for the same amount of rows that we have for our front panel that starts from our last alpine stitch detail row working all the way up until we reach our neck or the portion that works across our neck with no increases and no decreases. So if you guys have my numbers from this first row all the way till I have my last increase row, I have a total of 13 rows. So I'm just going to continue on with my back loop double crochet and back loop slip stitch rows until I have a total of 13. The last row that we should do should be a double crochet row. And like I said, I already have mine all finished up. So this is what our work should look like. Now, just as a fun fact, before we get started on the neck portion, the increase that we should have should be a similar incline as our front panel, not exactly the same, but pretty close. And then the width should be just about the same as well. That's the reason why we did the stitches that we did and the increases that we did. But all we're gonna do here is just do the same amount of neckline rows as the front panel. So the falling row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. The falling row is going to be a back loop double crochet row with no increases and no decreases. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can do the decrease portion on the other side. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up the solid portion that works across my back. I have the same amount of rows as my front panel, and now we're going to finish off the front panel by doing the decreases. So since we all should have ended right after a back loop slip stitch row, 
since we're along the bottom, we're going to chain three, flip our work, and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two so that we can decrease together. Okay, so we just put one back loop double crochet into every stitch. We left the last two, so now let's do a decrease. We're all gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that second to last back loop and pull through. Also insert your hook into that following back loop, pull through, we should have four loops on our hook. And from here, we're gonna yarn over, pull through just the first three loops, yarn over and pull through the last two loops, and that's our decrease. And we do need to decrease within our slip stitch row as well, so chain one and flip your work. Now to do our decrease within our slip stitch row, we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, and then into that following stitch's back loop. Once we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all three, and that is it. From here, we're just gonna continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then from here, we're just gonna keep repeating these two rows. So at the end of this row, chain three, flip our work, put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, ending the row with a decrease of two. And then right after that row, chain one, flip our work, start the following slip stitch row with a decrease of two, and then one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And we're just going to continue to repeat those two rows until we have the same amount of rows as we have along this side, which is our increase portion. Like I said in the previous clip, I had a total of 13 of these rows. So I'm gonna continue until I have a total of 13. All right, so we are back and the entirety of our back panel is all finished. I did do a chain up of one and cut, and now the next thing we're gonna do is seam everything together. So let's go ahead and grab our front panel. So when it comes to seaming our front and back panel together, we're gonna to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam, just so it looks like another back loop slip stitch row. So how we do that is make sure that our work is slipped right side out. So making sure that all of our detail is along the outside within the front panel and along the outside within the back panel. Then we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through everything, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now just to do the first few, we're gonna find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert your hook in through that front loop. And then finding that next available stitch into the back panel and then inserting your hook only in through that back loop. Once we have those three loops on our hook, all we're gonna do is just yarn over, pull through all three, and that is our first stitch. And that's it. Let's do one more. Find that next stitch into the front panel and insert in through the front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop yarn over and pull through all three and that is it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, then do a chain up one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, the next thing we're gonna start working on is our mock neck. So what we're going to do from here is make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and that we're looking at the back panel. We're all gonna start by inserting our hook into the top corner stitch into the back panel. So that would be the slip stitch row where we don't do any increases or decreases. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and we're all gonna start by making an even number chain that can reach up and over our shoulder to reach the front panel's corner stitch, but also making sure that it's wide enough to fit around our head. So I've already measured by now and I need roughly five inches or 13 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 20. And now that I have my chain, let's flip our work to look at the front panel. And then we're gonna single crochet into that top corner stitch within the front panel, which should be our first side slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases as well. So find that top loop, insert your hook, and then single crochet. And then from here, we're going to put two single crochets into every side double crochet, and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. So let's get this started. The following row that we should have should be a side double crochet row. So find that top loop and insert your hook into there with one, and then once more into that same top loop with two single crochets. Now right after that should be our side slip stitch row. So just one single crochet goes into there. So find that top loop, insert your hook and single crochet. And then that's it. We're just gonna continue to put two single crochet into every side double and then one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, making our way across until we reach our last side slip stitch row on the other side. All right, so I just made my way all the way across. 
So from here, we're going to need to make the same chain that we made along this side that reaches the back. So since I made a chain 20 here, I'm gonna make another chain 20. I now have my chain and I have flipped my work over. So now we're just gonna repeat everything that we did on the front. So single crochet into that side slip stitch row, which is the corner with one single crochet, and then into every side double crochet, two single crochet into that top loop. Continue to do this until we reach our chain on the other side, slip stitch into that first chain space, and then I'll meet you back to do our row two. So our first row is all finished up, and now we're gonna get started on our second row, which is pretty easy. So all we're gonna do is chain one, and making sure that we're still working in the same direction, just put one back loop single crochet into every chain and stitch that we have. Slip stitch into that chain space when we don't have any more stitches, and then I will meet you guys back. Alrighty, so we are back and we have just finished up going in with our back loop single crochet row. And right before we get started on the length of our mock neck, we're going to need to insert our stitch marker into the middle stitch that we have within the front panel. So making sure that we're looking at the front panel, we're going to find the middle stitch, which should be the stitch right above that middle slip stitch row that we have, and insert our stitch marker into there. And now we're going to make a chain the length that we would like for our mock neck to be. So I would like for my mock neck to be roughly two and a half inches or six centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 12. And now that we have our chain, we're gonna be doing a slip stitch row all the way down. So start by blocking off that last chain, do a chain one, that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just a turning chain, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, but making sure that we're not tugging too tightly after we finish a stitch, because otherwise the following row is gonna be too tight to work into. Let's just do one more. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything on our hook, and that's it. We're gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way down. So now that we've just slip stitched all the way down our chain, we're going to need to connect it into the base. So we're gonna start by finding that first available stitch into the base and insert your hook into there with a slip stitch. And now this first row is all closed off, so let's get started on the next one. Just find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way back down. And I'll meet you back once more to connect it into the base. So now that we've made our way all the way down, we're gonna need to slip stitch it into the base. So just like before, find that next available stitch, insert your hook, pull through everything, and then just to work our way up to the following row again, slip stitch into the next stitch, pull through everything, Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and then that's it. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down and then that's it. From here we're just going to continue to repeat these two rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into and then I'll meet you back to seam everything together. All right so now that I've made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitches we're now ready to seam everything together. So first things first, we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Yarn over, pull through everything, and this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So again, we're going to want to make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Next, we're going to insert our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, but only in through that front loop. And then into that next available stitch into the back panel, but only in through that back loop. And with all three loops on our hook, just yarn over it and pull through all three, and that is it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back to get started on our hood. So get your six millimeter hook ready. So now that our mock neck is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our hood. So first things first, make sure that our work is flipped right side out. You're gonna be inserting our six millimeter hook into our stitch marker stitch, which should be the middle stitch that we have within the front panel. And from here, we're gonna be doing a half double crochet row with some increases, making sure that we're working towards the left or clockwise because this isn't reversible. So I'm gonna take out my stitch marker because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, and I'm gonna start with a chain two, but that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, we just want the height. And for this row, we're going to do four half double crochets and do an increase of two into the fifth. 
So our first half double crochet is going to be worked into that same stitch that our chain two is in. Because remember that chain two doesn't count as a stitch. So insert your hook into there with a half double. And then working towards the left, we're going to do three more half doubles for a total of four. So there's two. There is three. And there is four. And then into that following stitch, an increase of two. So yarn over. Into that following stitch, there's our first half double. And then into that same stitch, our second half double for our increase. And once we have that, we're just going to continue to repeat this, making our way all the way around. So let's just do one more set together. So after our increase, we're going to do four half double crochets into the next four stitches. We're going to be doing four half double crochets. So there's my first, my second, my third, and my four half double crochets. You can see them right there. And then into that following stitch, our increase. So one half double crochet, and then into that same stitch, a second half double crochet. And we're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way around, making sure that the last stitch that we do is worked into that same stitch that our chain two and first half double crochet is in, because that's the middle. All right, so our first half double crochet row is all finished up. And our row two is going to be another half double crochet row, but without increases or decreases now. So from here, all we're going to do is chain two, flip our work, and then put one half double crochet into every stitch, and I'll meet you guys back along this end. All right, so our first two half double crochet rows are all finished up, and now we're going to get started on our row three or our first alpine stitch row. So all we're going to do is chain two, flip our work, and start with a half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And then right after that, we are going to be working into our row one with our front post double crochet. So yarn over, and we're going to insert our hook underneath that second half double crochet. So making sure we're not counting that chain two, here's one, and then here's two. Go ahead and insert your hook underneath, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two, and then that is it. We are already experts at the alpine stitch, so just continue to do our half double crochet and then front post double crochet, making our way all the way around. And that's basically it. Since we already know how to do this, I'm just going to let you guys do this part on your own. But just as a refresher, in between every alpine stitch row, there will be a half double crochet row just to work our way back to the other side. And then our following alpine row, our stitches will be staggered from the previous one. And the last tip that we have is if your last stitch ends on a front post double crochet, we are always going to combine that last front post double crochet with a half double crochet just to keep the edge nice and blunt. But that's it. Just continue to do this until we get the height of the hood that we need. And then I'll meet you back right after an alpine stitch row so we can seam everything together. So I am back with the total length of my hood. Now from where we started with our first half double crochet row all the way until where I ended, I had a total of 39 rows and this height is just about 15 and a half inches or 39 centimeters. And now from here, we just need to seam the top together, closing up our hood. So now we're going to make sure that our work is slipped wrong side out because we're gonna do a single crochet seam. So start by grabbing our two ends and then we're just going to pinch it backwards so that we are looking at the inside. So now that our work is flipped wrong side out, we're going to start our seam. So we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through. And just to do the first seam together, we're going to start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel. Insert your hook into there. Find that next available stitch into the back panel. Insert your hook into there. And single crochet, and now it's all connected. And from here, we're just going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, go ahead and do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that our hood is all seamed up, the last thing we're going to do is just clean up our armholes. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into the loop that's nearest to our hood, and then we're going to insert our yarn. We're going to do a chain up of one to secure. And then all we're going to do from here is put two single crochets into every side double crochet row one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. But then once we reach the front panel, 
We are going to have some side half double crochet rows to work into, but the stitch sequence will still be the same. So from there, we're just going to alternate between one single crochet into one side row and then two single crochet into the following side row. So basically the same thing. So let's just do the first set together and then I'll let you guys do the rest on your own. So the first side row that we all should have should be a side double crochet row. All we're going to do is find that top loop and insert our hook with one single crochet and then once more into that same top loop for our second single crochet and then into that side slip stitch row that is just one single crochet so go ahead and find that top loop and single crochet and that's it we're just going to continue to do this making our way all the way around and then once we don't have any more side rows left to work into just slip stitch into the stitch that's nearest to the hood and then i will meet you guys back all right, so now that I have single crocheted my way all the way up to my hood, now we're gonna start working on our armband and that's going to be pretty simple. We're just gonna start with a single crochet row, the length that we would like for our armband to be. Now I'd like for mine to be just about an inch or two centimeters. So I'm gonna start by doing four single crochet into the base of the hood, but we are gonna have some special loops to work into. Now we aren't gonna have any actual stitches to work into, but we are going to have these loops. So as you guys can see, they're kind of like little dashes. Here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. Now I'm just going to be putting one single crochet into each of those little loops. So let's get this started. I'm going to find my first loop and insert my hook into there with a single crochet. There's one. Here is my second. Here is my third. And then here is my fourth. Now that I have the width of my armband, all we're gonna do from here is chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So from here on out, it's going to be basically the same way that we did the mock neck. So one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way. And we're just going to continue to do that with absolutely no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way down until we reach our side seam stitch and then do a chain up of one and cut. Once we have that, I will meet you guys back, but we're basically going to do the same thing that we did here on the other side. And we're doing it that way so that it's a little bit easier to seam it instead of making our way all the way around and trying to find those little loops and seam it that way. All right, so I have the first half of my armband all finished up. I did do a chain up of one and cut, and now we're just gonna do the same exact thing on the other side, except once we reach this last stitch, don't do a chain up of one and cut so we can seam everything together. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up the second half of our armband. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're just gonna seam it together and it's gonna be the same seam as our side, so let's get started. First things first, make sure that our work is slipped right side out, and we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and from here, let's just do the first outside loop slip stitch seam together. Start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel, and insert only in through that front loop. Find that next available stitch into the back panel, and insert only in through that back loop. From there, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and that's it. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. While we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that our armband is finished up on both sides, we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.